Welcome back, Tracy. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Lots of lots has happened since we last spoke. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and it will keep on happening, won't it? So, so, you know, I want. So, I want to ask you: So, are you still after the red wave uh, in inflation, Easta? So, yes, I even more so. But I think okay. really where we should start here is kind of what I. Th- think that we're going to see as far as a shift, as far as the market is concerned. I think, you know, we've been seeing outflows in uh, NASDAQ and, you know, a lot of that has to do with semiconductors. You know, I think tariffs are kind of spooking that market. And I think what we're going to see is inflows into energy, industrials, mining and materials and continue to see some of those outflows out of tech. Um, so okay. that's where, you know, I would like to start. <laughs> All right. So, okay, that's fine. So uh, the NASDAQ, uh, I still think it has more left in it, don't you? Or do you think that we're topping right here? Um, you know, I, I don't really trade the NASDAQ. I mean, I mostly look at the internals. For the last couple of days, we've seen, you know, outflows out of uh, some of the biggest ones in the sector, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, uh, AMD. And so just continue to watch that. That doesn't mean that that the index as a whole can't move higher. You know, I'm just watching kind of the internals of what people are kind of doing right now. Yeah, there's a nice divergence in NVIDIA right here. You know, I was thinking 6,100 S&Ps. All right. So uh, talking about it, last time um, I brought up Nat Gas to you. And uh, and I've been kind of, I've been pounding the table there. That's one heck of a gap it left yesterday. Uh, um, And you were, I think, positive on LNG stocks. I am still positive on LNG and natural gas, where I think the trade is for this particular sector is going to be the midstream. So that's transportation and storage, things like pipelines, um, storage, et cetera. So I think those are going to outperform as far as LNG. um, You have a name? And you have a symbol? I like EQT. I like paper, which has been rallying since the election. Yeah, see, in fact, um, I have it up here. You're not the first one to bring it up. So, right, KMI. Uh, I think KMI. I think will do well. Here's uh, EQT. Look at that. Yep. What What's not to like? It so, looks like Bitcoin. I've been kind of like- pounding on the table on. Uh, midstream sector since before the election, actually. But now it's even more so because, you know, we just had the EU come, uh, von der Leyen just come in and say, hmm, maybe we'll just buy LNG from the United States instead of Russia all of a sudden. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, again, what, you know, I think, you know, KMI just built a pipeline from the Permian to the Gulf, which is much needed because there are a lot of uh, natural gas like Waha natural gas, which is not what people trade. People are trading Henry Hub, but you know, which was trading negative because it had nowhere to go. And so um, they're trying to build out pipelines now to get them to the coast so they can. Uh, and that's KMI, mm-hmm. Trace? Kinder Morgan. Kinder Morgan. Okay. Okay. So pipelines. So, so that one's doing do, all yeah. They, yeah, they're they're becoming parabolic. So absolutely, what, I don't know if I would chase at these areas, but certainly if we see a pullback, um, I would be a buyer on pullbacks. All right, so uh, let's let's move over to uh, miners. So uh, best of breed got killed. Uh, so uh, what are you looking at as far as miners? Is it copper miners? Uh, is it Gold, I, silver miners. You know, I still like, um, I still like uh, silver miners. I think this is a, you know, great area to get a pullback on. You know, we've seen prices kind of pull back. Silver is kind of holding up better than gold because it's really more of an industrial, industrial. metal, right, R- rather than a precious metal. So, you know, if I think, I, I think if we can, you know, hold this thirty area, you're still going to have. Uh, miners do very well. And, you know, earlier this year, we saw uh, a nice rise in those. So, you know, a pullback is, you know, well, is welcome. 
in addition, you. you know, I think everybody looks at, I think Silver was also kind of spooked because of, you know, the Trump administration or coming up administration is obviously anti, I don't want to say anti-green, but, you know, anti-green. Um, oh. So, and I think that it got spooked, uh, Silver got spooked a little bit because of all the uses in industrial green. usage for solar and yeah. for, uh, for uh, wind turbines. That said, I think what people are missing here is that silver is also used in nuclear, and this administration is very pro-nuclear. And so I think that the markets need to kind of digest that. In addition, you know, even if we see a pullback in the United States, as far as solar and wind is concerned, you know, where you're definitely not going to see that in Europe. So you're still going to have demand there and you're still going to have China demand. So, um, you know, it's us isn't that big of a market to be honest in those areas. Um, you have a view on the dollar of the persistent strength that's happening here. Um, uh, uh, you know, along with the move that we had in yields, uh, you used to track dollar. Do you still, as a um, part of yeah, your I mean, wheelhouse? Yeah. Still- well, shall I? I mean, you know, I think it again, we're kind of getting, you know, I think if we start to see like 110 again, I think that's where you'll probably see Yellen do something about it because it'll be too strong. Yellen? Yes, the treasury, the current. Oh, the, okay. So you you <laughs> think we could be at 110 before the new president? Well, I have, I have, I'm just saying if it gets there, I, I don't oh. want to make any calls as far as the dollar is concerned. I mean, the chart still looks mega bullish, uh, but at some point, I think the treasury secretary will have to step in and yeah, probably be the next one. Chill it out. And, and, and how do they do that? How, I, I mean, really, how, how does the treasury just jawboning it, saying they want a lower dollar, is that going to give them a lower you can dollar? Do that, you can do it with bonds, with um, swaps. There's, I mean, there's a lot of levers that they can pull. Can they? Uh, would it? Maybe it'll take intervention. So, well, they pro- they could do that, but I don't think they would admit that they're doing that. Okay. All right, that, so that's a new era, and there, you know, there's not going to be cooperation between central banks. Then, um, how about some of the ancillary metals? You like platinum and palladium? They've come off quite a bit. Here's palladium. Yeah, I mean, I love buying, you know, platinum below a thousand. You know, you can buy you it. Got it. Below a thousand, runs up fifty to seventy-five bucks, and then goes back to a thousand. I mean, look at the pattern. It's pretty. Yeah. Cool pattern so you know i like buying anything under uh, under a thousand and you know writing it for it that's one of the ones that why I, thousand is it, it is that production costs day trade as far as what sorry is a thousand dollars uh do you like buying it under a thousand is that because a thousand is production costs or no just... it's just because of this is literally just a technical trade as okay <laughs> no, all right uh, honest, how about can... how how about copper? That's not a so, technical I, trade. No, I, copper is still, I mean, I still love copper too. You know, we're still holding kind of a, we're still holding above $4. Um, yeah. I think long-term, I still like that. Again, I would probably, you know, I, I think t- trying to trade copper out right is rather difficult um, mm-hmm. unless you're maybe a day trader. Um just because of kind of how it reacts. But, you know, I think if you, some of the major producers look very interesting still. Okay. How about Florida real estate? How are, about, are you, are you noticing anything, any softening? I've talked oh, to like Melody Wright about it and, uh, you know, she's pretty negative on housing going into the coming year. Definitely, we have seen prices come down in Fort Lauderdale. I can only speak to where I okay. live, but okay. definitely we have seen prices come down. That said, rents have not budged and okay. keep being higher because nobody's buying; everybody's renting. So okay. the rental the rental market here seems very strong still, um, but we are seeing softening in the housing market. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Uh, you know that there was actually a hurricane 
1923 that marked the top of Florida real estate. And uh, maybe that. it rhymes with the hurricane, this hurricane season. Yeah, uh, I mean, true. I mean, we knock on wood, luckily, we're spared on both yeah. of them. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, obviously, not everybody was. Okay, so uh, natural gas pipelines. Um, the this is a break to buy in uh, precious metals, uh, probably mm -hmm. especially silver. Um, as long as it holds thirty, so you know you have a line in the sand. Um, I, I, this is what I wanted to ask you about, Trace, because you know. I tried crude like everyone else, thinking that, you know, when Israel went in, they were going to hit Karg Island. That's probably, you know, in January or maybe sooner. I think they will. But I, I was wondering, can you come up uh, with a fundamental narrative that matches with my technical narrative in um, crude, which I'm looking for, you know, the low 60s. I've had this line drawn for, I don't know a year all right yeah and... I, I think that you know i think as far as oil is concerned i think this is going to be a sideways market and it's been a sideways market and which has been very frustrating to traders i understand that but it's been at a big enough range that if you you know semi swing it you know you can grab grab some dollars here and there for sure uh but really a fundamental reason why i don't see it holding below say 60 is because shale break evens are at $65. So if you hold below 60 for any length of time, you're going to see production come off massively. Okay. So this could be a great spot if it got down there. I, 62. I think, yeah, at around, you know, I have anywhere from like 60 to 63. I would yeah. take stabs at longs there. Okay. All right. Cool. I knew you'd come up with something. <laughs> um anything else i think we've covered uh the board pretty much uh, uh yeah again you, like you know watch industrials mining and materials i think will do very well i also think um utilities will continue to do well uh because of ai okay. data centers We're seeing a little bit of a pullback there but um i still like that sector very much going forward and isn't that really a part of the nat gas story uh, that um, it's going to well, be it's more. Nat gas. Yeah, it's yeah. not gas, nuclear. I mean, it's yeah. just power in general. So. Yeah. So what's easier or more accessible, obviously, is it natural gas and, uh, you know, nuclear? It's easier. Yeah. It's ready to go. It's ready. It's ready to go. And you can build out facilities rather quickly. And so that's the plus Compare, for, for natural compared gas. To compared to a yeah. to nuclear to, reactor, either you have to you know, restart one like Three Mile Island that they've been yeah. talking about, or yeah. you have to build one, which takes permitting and yeah. um, building time, which, you know, can be very lengthy process up to 10 years. That said, you know, this new administration coming in is talking about deregulation. So what I'm hoping is that we see some deregulation as far as the bureaucratic red tape is in kind of permitting for some of these projects, in particular nuclear and also uh, domestic mining. Okay. You know, uh, you know, Trace, people say, oh, gaps are always filled. Don't count on this one uh, being filled. I don't know if I would count on this one being filled. It's got a little hang day. It's the only gap I saw on the weekly chart going back years. So um, if it doesn't hold, get out of the way. Don't, I, sure. I don't think I would buy <laughs> it. But uh, see, you look all the way back in that gas, not too many gaps. This was a pretty good gap higher opening. We'll see. I mean, it it's holds. been consolidating for yeah. two years now. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll right. see. You know, I don't see, I don't see price any reason for a price rip, right? Yeah. But I definitely can see where we see, you know, perhaps four, three, four dollars, and yeah. holding there, um, yeah. which is still way less expensive than it is in uh, Europe, and so even with the cost of transportation, LNG, L, U.S. LNG still looks very attractive. Okay. 
And uh, best best place to find you, Trace. I know that you're with Damp Spring, that you're writing for them. I know you also have a few other places people could keep tabs on your thoughts. Yep. All right. Well, Shy Girl and on Twitter, obviously, or X. Right. Sorry. <laughs> right. Boom. That's my real. That's my only social media site. Um, then, of course, it might drop markets every Wednesday, and um, and that's about it. Damped Spring, and then uh, Hill Tower Resource Advisors. Okay, so um, uh, LNG shipping. Yes, I'm just looking at what some of uh, drill yeah, baby like drill. Yeah. <laughs> Transport, so transports like look for storage and uh and pipelines again. Like I said, I wouldn't chase it, yeah, at these areas right now after we've seen this big move. But I think it's certainly, um, it'd be nice to have a that. be nice to have at least some type of correction in the SPs from 6100 and yeah. see what gets cheap. Um, just have your shopping list like those stocks and do your it, fib it, work and buy your retracement. Exactly. That's exactly what I was. Okay. Well, that's from the for. coach. All so. right. All right. Trace, great uh, hanging out with you for a little while. Anything you want to wrap it with, like the most imper- important lesson you've learned in life? Uh, <laughs> patience. <laughs> Have patience. Uh, oh, my. Yeah, and you've learned it or working on it? Always, always working on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear you, sister. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tracy Shukart, everybody. Follow her at Shy Girl. And, uh, you know, I have some followers that just brag about some of the great picks you made in LNG and, and everything. So uh, uh, ignore what Tracy says at your own peril and opportunity loss, in my view. So thank you. Thank you, my trading warrior sister. Thank you. See you guys next time. Have a great uh, rest of your day, everybody. Uh, all right. Have have a great fourth quarter, and I'll see you next year. But we should have uh, should be kind of a different world. I know, absolutely. So it it'll be interesting to look back at what we talked about today. Yeah. How all that right. worked out. <laughs> yeah. All right, Tracy. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, all right. So I'm a fan. You should be a fan too. Check her out, and that's a wrap. You could join the team in about 20 minutes on the morning edge. Uh, You have to be a member to do that. And remember, most of all, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Uh, Let's see what's Canada doing, and, you know, maybe I should take some partials. Yeah, it's unchanged now. So a decent... uh, Turn around Tuesday trade, even if you booked it here while we were on the air, you made enough to go to McDonald's. Okay. Um, I'm looking for this. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Uh, people are thanking you, Tracy. Thanks, and, everybody. All right. And George, okay. You're welcome, guys. All right. See everyone tomorrow. Thanks again, Tracy. Adios. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.